Hello everyone and welcome to Student Hub Live. The end of Freshers Week. This is our social event and it's great to have you all here with us tonight. So hopefully you've managed to get to some of the earlier events with Isabella and you've had a great time. Well, the rest of the team is here to say hello tonight and uh, we've got quite a few things to uh, get involved with. So hopefully you've had some emails and got some things prepared, but we're going to kick straight off and I'm going to ask Heidi to tell us who have we got in the chat, Heidi, and what are they talking about already? Hello, good evening, Rob, and hello to everybody that's joining us. This is my first time doing one of these. I did the Freshers shows um, this week, which were really fun, but this is my first Freshers social event, so you're going to have to bear with me, okay? So hopefully I'm going to get everything right. Um, I'm new to this as well, if that makes you feel a bit better as a Fresher to the OU. So my name's Heidi and I've studied with the OU previously. So I'm a former student. Um, I studied for six years with the OU, absolutely love it. And I now work here. So I know exactly how you're all feeling. I know about the uh, the early apprehension when you first start with your studies. Um, so I want to say some hellos this evening. So we've got loads of international students joining us, which is fantastic. So Nazibullah is joining us from Afghanistan. Uh, we've got Susanna, who is joining us from a very rainy Normandy in France. And Rochelle is also in France. Hi to you, Rochelle. Um, Alison is in Georgia in the United States. Um, Alison says it's almost 2 p.m., so a bit early here, but may make a mocktail and it sounds good. It's so great to have you with us, Alison. I've spent loads and loads of time in the US, so it's, um, it's great to have you with us. Um, we've also got Elle, who's joining us from Warwickshire. We've got Helen, who's joining us from Glasgow. And Dale has got a chow mein on the way, which sounds nice. Me and my son actually got fish and chips this evening. So um, I've already had my takeaway. So we went out in the rain to go and get that. It was absolutely delicious. Um, and Serafina, I just want to say a huge congratulations to you because Serafina, such a beautiful name, uh, passed um, their driving test on Tuesday. The weather was horrendous that morning, but there was a huge rainbow across the road as they drove back to the test centre and they will never forget it. So lots of people congratulating Serafina in the in the chat. That's fantastic. Yay. So thanks so much for joining us. If you find that the chat's moving a little bit fast, by the way, because it does go through very quickly sometimes, in the top right-hand side, there's a little pin. If you click on that, it will slow the chat down for you. And then as the show goes on, you'll find that we've got some really fantastic widgets, some really nice interactive bits for you to get involved with. So um, do feel free to have a little play around with those when they come on the screen. But enjoy the show. Excellent. Thank you for that, Heidi. And it's great to meet so many of you. Keep writing in the chat. Uh, just bear in mind that this is a public forum, so don't put any personal information into the chat. So no phone numbers, no emails, anything like that. So as I said, I'm Rob. I'm one of the presenters on Student Hub Live, and I'm also a tutor in the business school. And we'll introduce you to some of our guests now. We've got uh, a couple of other members of Student Hub Live with us. We've got Jay and we've got Margaret. So, Jay, say hello. <laughs> hello. Hello. <laughs> good evening, everybody. It's great. <laughs> it's great to be here. It's really good fun. So Jay's going to be taking us through the mocktails in a little while. And <laughs> Margaret is another of our presenters. And Margaret's going to be doing some memory exercises with us. So say hello, Margaret. Hi, everybody. Uh, nice to be with you tonight. Uh, it's raining here as well in Rosendale. <laughs> oh, so we're here in uh, Leicestershire and it's starting to get um, a little dark. So the, the lights may have to go up at some point. Uh, in the chat, you've already been talking with Kat and with Rafa. And I'm sure we've got images. I think we've got images of Kat and Rafa to show you. There we are. And... Uh, they're the, the guys that are answering your questions, trying to keep on top of the hundreds of messages coming in. So give them lots of grief and lots of things to do. Uh, tonight is very much a social, relaxed evening, so have fun. And our final two special guests have taken over the far side of my study shack. So I'd just like to introduce you to the Orcs. Hello, Orcs. Give us a wave. So the Orcs have come along to just basically make sure we stay in check. And uh, we've been accused of being too nicey-nicey. So they're going to make sure that uh, we, we get some gremlins floating around tonight because we all like it when things go slightly uh, awry. So as we said, lots of things to get involved with and lots of opportunities to get involved with the chat. Um, so we're going to start off 
and we're going to ask you to get involved with us in the uh, in the widget. So you're going to see a widget. A, a widget is just um, one of our little tools that you can interact with us on. And there'll be a widget there with five of our names on there. And what we're going to do tonight is as we go through, I'm going to tell you four facts, four truths that um, are things that have happened to four of our Student Hub Live team. And we're going to get you to vote and say which person it applies to. Okay. And then when we get to the end, um, uh, when we've done the activity, we'll see how many of you have actually got the name right. Okay. So the first truth I'm going to throw out is one of our team, and it could be me, uh, you've got a choice of me, uh, Margaret, Kat, Jay, or Rafa. So they're the, the names you can vote for. So one of us, when we were on holiday with our better half in America, we were walking along the street and we pointed out a British telephone box. And the better half, turned and said, I bet that cost a fortune. That's, that must really be expensive. And this scruffy urchin standing next to them said, that's all you Brits really worry about, isn't it? It's the cost of things. You're focused completely on money and, and really gave them a telling off. It turned out that that scruffy urchin was Willie Nelson and they got told off by Willie Nelson. So which of us is that a truth for so you've got the names there you can vote just while we go through this next activity and we'll come back and we'll tell you who that was at the end so while you're thinking about that we're going to move on and it's time for jay and jay's going to take us through um her favorite non-alcoholic drink and i'm going to get the uh the walks to make it as well at the same time jay so we'll see their <laughs> version at the end so i'm going to hand okay. over to you and hopefully you can talk us through this delicious non-alcoholic cocktail thanks rob brilliant okay so we're going to make a non-alcoholic cocktail um it, where I am in Buckinghamshire, it's getting a little bit dark. It's not quite the summer sun maybe we'd hoped for or the Indian summer. But what we're going to do is make a cocktail anyway. So I've got my cocktail shaker ready here. Um, I have got some uh, kind of end of summer strawberries ready to go here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Of course, I've got a glass ready to go with a little straw just for added fun. And of course, what you always need for a cocktail is a snazzy little umbrella. So I've got those there as well. And then for a bit of vintage fun, I may or may not use it, but this is an old, um, I think it's my grandmother's. This is an old sort of um, mixer. So the more you push down on it, the more it will, it will mix. Um, and then I've got a little bit of honey because who doesn't like a little bit of sweetness? Um, and then I got a little bit of lime just for that final touch, that final flourish. So, because we're on Student Hub Live, and I didn't want the sound guys to absolutely hate me, I'm not going to use a blender, but if you wanted to, you could use a blender. Uh, what I've done is I've got um, a sieve, good old-fashioned sieve. So, all I did beforehand is I smashed a few strawberries through that sieve. So, I'm just going to smash a few more ever so slightly off camera. And because strawberries are really soft and quite sort of gooey, they go through the sieve really easily. And then what I've been doing is in my little pot, and I tell you what, when you smash the strawberries, they smell great. Uh, so in my little pot, can you see it? I think the orcs would like this because it looks a bit bloodthirsty. Yeah. <laughs> um, I've got my strawberry mixture here, um, and I put a tiny bit of sugar in there because as the sugar and the strawberries hit, they do something called macerating. So they start to break down, which is a bit like when you make jam and you add uh, lemon and pectin and everything like that. So what I'm going to do is add all of my lovely strawberry mixture to my cocktail shaker. Here we go. So adding in the mixture now. <laughs> that does look a bit tasty <laughs> for the orcs, doesn't it? And then in uh, over here, I've got some ice and I've got some um, uh, kind of lemonade. I've got my lemonade all ready to go and I've been pre-chilling it. So I'm just going to pour that. Of course, laptops, ice, water definitely mix. 
So I'm just swirling that around as I, as I make it. And now what I'm gonna do is just add my honey for a little bit of sweetness. Now honey is quite sticky. Um, so actually, if you ever want to kind of utilize it, it's great to have a hot spoon near you. So dip it in some hot water and then just dip your spoon in the honey and it will glide right off. But I thought that probably wasn't the most health and safety conscious thing I could have done this evening. So I've got all of my ingredients in there, bar my tiny little squeeze of lime. So I'm gonna put one squeeze of lime in now and then I'm gonna put one squeeze of lime in later. So I'm gonna put my lid on and ordinarily, I think uh, you shake your cocktail until the outside of your um, shaker is kind of got condensation on it. But again, so that the sound guys don't hate me, I won't do that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna swirl. What's, um, what's the phrase? Shaken but not stirred or stirred but not shaken. Um, and so I have got a little strainer on the top of my cocktail maker. So initially I might do a little bit of straining. Let's hope the lid doesn't pop off, but I'm sure we've got a student have like blooper reel somewhere. So that would be quite helpful. So I'm just straining it off again. I think the orcs are going to like this because it looks a little on the on the red side. Yeah, Working the orcs are saying really they've well. got their own version of your ingredients, which we'll see in a minute. <laughs> okay, have they now? So what I might do is just top up with a little bit more lemonade, a little bit more ice. I'm going to pop my straw in. I've got a little bit of lime that I pre-cut. I'm just going to slide in the side. And then, obviously, to finish, I've got a strawberry, which I've pre-cut. Let me pop the straw there so you can see it, camera side. Now, the question is, do we go orange umbrella or do we go pink? I'm going to go pink. And then just to finish, for that extra pop of green, just a tiny bit of lime juice in there okay now for the big taste test that's good even if i do so so myself rob do you want people to take pictures and send them in if we can oh that sounds like a great idea um <laughs> cat if you can drop the uh the, the email address in we can perhaps get some pictures by the end of the session just because you've not Brilliant. got enough to do sat there answering all the questions <laughs> sorry <laughs> landed landed somebody in it but i'll take a photo <laughs> of mine for posterity and uh we can kind of compare and contrast maybe on them on some of our platforms but yeah it's a good it's a good taste it's a good recipe so it'd be fab to see other people um their creations and how they decorate it and how they finish it off and uh, what we their top tips are as well get a a board made up of all the cocktails people have made tonight. So, yes, if you send them in, then we'll get your pictures on. So, <laughs> excellent. So, thank you. And I think the Orcs want to show us their slight variation. So, I think there we go. So, first of all, what is it they, instead of a strawberry, there we are, they're the hearts from little furry animals. The little cats and mice, they're dropping them in. Okay, I think that's enough hearts, orcs. And then instead of strawberry juice, there it is. We've got the congealed blood of hobbits. <laughs> that's it. Hold it up, guys, so we can see what you're doing. Oh. <laughs> and we mix that in. There we go. And we mix that in with the distilled tears of the Hobbit's family after you've extracted the blood. And there we've got it. That's the Hawk's version, which you then stir <laughs> with a gangrenous finger bone. And they've called that a Hobbito, which this particular one, due to the nature of the congealed blood, is a Bloody Mary. <laughs> so... Thank you, guys. And if you wanted to make a slightly less bloodthirsty version, you can, of course, use strawberry jelly that's been mixed up with um, raspberry cordial and um, lemonade and little jelly hearts. <laughs> so thank you, guys. And thank you, Jay. That was brilliant. And But if anybody wants to make the Orc version as well, we're, we're always into some... Um, 
horror uh, or Halloween uh, mocktails that can be used at the end of the month. Heidi, have people been telling us about their um, their favourite uh, mocktails as well? What have they been saying? Yeah, they have. So Jane actually just asked the question, what's the Orcs' favourite drink? So hopefully we've answered that one for you, Jane. Um, a bloody Ellie Mary. says, <laughs> a bloody Mary, that's it, exactly. Um, so Ellie said, not going to lie, the last thing I thought I would see was Orcs drinking mocktails tonight. Ha ha. So yeah, a little <laughs> unexpected for, for some of our guests. Um, They're not alcoholic yeah. unless the, the hobbits have been on the beer because then it's a sort of inference. So carry on. <laughs> so Catherine says, Jay, that drink looks delicious. I've got all the ingredients at home. Lemons from my tree too. Wow. So I'll be making this later. Yum. So right. homegrown lemons, delicious. Oh, yeah. Really nice. Um, so Emma said, I would have had strawberries if I hadn't snacked on them all day already. Oops. Um, so then um, our guests have also been sharing with us what they've got, um, what they're drinking this evening. So Samantha says, I have a pre-mixed gin and lemonade in a can. I'm a classy Welsh girl. I love that. Uh, Suzanne says, I have a gin and tonic. And Rebecca and Holly Ray both have got wine. Re Rebecca actually says, I've got wine from a box tonight. Um, <laughs> Sunny has just had a cup of tea at the moment, but is going to have a mocktail shortly. Um, a few of you are enjoying a glass of Prosecco. And actually, uh, my colleague Kat has been talking about something called Zero Secco, which I presume is a non-alcoholic um, Prosecco, which I might try because I, I don't ever drink alcohol myself. So I might try that one. Uh, Melissa has got mm. Lucasade and Thomas is enjoying a cold beer. I'm a bit boring. I've just got water this evening. I didn't even make myself a cup of tea. That's how disorganized I've been. I'm gonna, so I'm going to pretend I'm, I'm sipping vodka. <laughs> but now out of a water. big... Out of a it, big it glass is, like that, water. goodness me, you're not going to be standing by the end of the show, Rob, if it is. <laughs> I might be coherent by the end, though. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you for that, Heidi. Uh, so we're going to come in a minute to the widget, see who you voted for for that story. So we're going to see whose story you thought it was. So which of our team got verbally abused by... Uh, Willie Nelson on holiday. So, Margaret, you look like you're the uh, the person that's uh, most likely to upset Willie Nelson. But, ah, no, actually, you're wrong. It's our cat. Cat on holiday was um, w walking along and, yep, Willie Nelson started to uh, question... Uh, her perspective on money, shall we say. So thank you for that. <laughs> so that's the first of our truths. We're going to reset that widget now. We're going to let you vote again in a minute. The next truth is one of our team um, had a dog they, who had um, surgery on a hip and was given a metal hip. And every time um, they went on holiday with the dog, it was setting off the, um, the the alarms in the airport, the security alarms, uh, causing a great deal of fuss and uh, lots of hassle getting the dog around. So which one of our team had a dog with a replacement hip that kept setting off metal detectors? You can vote and it's one of the five of us again. So we'll come back and have a look at that in a moment. Uh, we're now going to come on to Margaret, and Margaret's going to give, be giving us some hints and tips on uh, on memory. And I think Margaret, you want people to write something in the chat to uh, mm -hmm. to, yeah. to give you something. So, if you'd like to explain that to them. Okay. Um. Hi, everybody. Um. I don't even know who Willie Nelson is. So that definitely wasn't my story. <laughs> um. Anyway. Um. So. <clears throat> A lot of the time nowadays, you can just use gadgets to help your memory. But there are occasions, like say you're giving a presentation or you've got an interview like some, or something like that, where you need to just rely on your memory and it can be quite daunting. So what we're going to do tonight is we're going to look at a technique called the, the um, loci technique or the journey technique. It was actually invented by the Romans way back thousands and thousands of years ago. Um, they actually banned their senators from taking speeches in. And so they used this trick to cheat, to keep going and talking and talking and talking. So first of all, I need your help. So in a few minutes, I'm going to use a list of random words. So I'd like you to, in the chat box, choose a word that's a thing, something you could pick up. 
to a noun, something that, you know, solid that you can pick up, like my little things there, but not obviously my little things there. So you, we're going to get far more than we need. So Heidi is then going to pick 10 and give them to Rob. And then Rob's going to give them to me and see then if I can put them in the memory technique and then see if I can remember them. So we'll see how it goes. Okay. It's a lot of stress this to try and do it live. We'll have a go. Um, so what I'd like you to do is do it along with me and I'll explain the journey technique. You develop your own journey. So if you want to start putting those words in the chat, um, Heidi will start collecting them and choose the 10. So it'll be fairly random. I have no idea what you're going to come up with tonight. So we'll see how it goes. So. The idea of the journey technique is that you take something you know really, really well, and you can go around that in your head reliably every single time without getting it wrong. So my journey I've chosen is the journey around my lounge. So I go into my lounge through the door from the hall. So that's my first stop. I stop at that door. The next stop is the pictures that my dad drew. There's a little nice one of a doorway in Durham. Then there's the um, sideboard cupboard that my daughter bought to put all her craft things in. Then there's the doorway into my kitchen. Then there's the hideous cupboard my husband got one day when he escaped to Ikea. And it's absolutely disgusting. It's been there 25 years. It still hasn't gone. <laughs> then I've got some gym equipment. Then I've got the doorway into this room. And then I've got... Um, a really nice um, cabinet that me and my daughter chose. We've got better taste than my husband. Um, and then a chair. So I've got 10 things on that journey round. And I can do that in my head reliably because I know what's in my room. So what I want you to do is pick something like that that you know really well. So it could be like I've gone round a room. It could be going from room to room within your house. It could be a journey you do traveling from one place to another, say from home to work or home to school. And I want you to do is... Try and find 10 things on that journey where you could stop and have in your head, you know you're stopping there. So um, I'm going to give you, um, and you can write down things down as well while you're doing it to get it in your head. And once you've got it in there, you can keep using it and using it again. So there's a bit of effort here, but then it's kind of a strategy. You can keep using it every time you need to remember stuff. And what we're going to do is I'm going to have a go at remembering 10 things with my journey. You're going to have a go at remembering those same 10 things. I'm going to have to repeat mine live, but luckily you're just going to have to be able to vote whether you've got seven or more of them. So you're in a bit of a safer situation than I am. Okay. So um, when you've done your 10 words, Heidi's going to tell them to Rob and then Rob's going to come on the screen and tell me. So I'm now going to give you a bit of silence to try and do your own journey. So something like around my room or around your house, or from one place to another. And everybody's going to keep quiet while you do it. I mean, it's going to be very difficult to keep Rob quiet for a minute. So we'll see how we get on. Oh, okay, so goodness you... me! <laughs> see, look, he's already talking. What do I get from my colleagues? I don't know. <laughs> he's already talking. Right, so right, one minute. I'm now going to change gonna... all these words to make them really hard. <laughs> oh, you probably will as well. He's doing so like that. Right, I'm stopping now. I'm going to stop talking. So you've got a minute to try and work out your journey of 10 things. Okay. So, do you want me to read through the ten? No, you're supposed now? to be quiet, Rob. I told you couldn't keep quiet for my minute, didn't I? <laughs> I told oh. you. Right, we've a minute oh, silence, Rob. Oh, you managed to do it. Well done, Rob. <laughs> Congratulations. So once you've got your journey of 10 places, you may not have had time in that minute to get it completely done, but to have another go at it later on on your own if you didn't get time to get it completely done. You then, as you've got the thing you want to remember, make a really good attachment between that thing that you've got and the thing that's in your journey. So um, I'll give you an example with the first word. And then you have to make that do it with your room, not my room or your journey. But I'm not going to tell you how I'm doing the other nine words, but you need to do it along with us. 
you can write the words down as well if you want to help you out a bit. I'm not allowed to write. I'm, I'm just not, so I'll, I'll keep. My, I'm not going to put my hands up there because it looks really silly. But I'm not going to write anything down. I promise you. And I'll just talk you through the first one. And you need to try and make sure there's movement there. That it's a bit silly. And um, uh, if you can do colour in your head, if you're not somebody that sees pictures in your head, make sure the sound to do with whatever you've done. I don't tend to hear things in my head too much, um, so um, I go with images and movement. So I'm ready with the first word. Rob, give me the first word. The first word. Now I'm allowed to talk again. Yeah, you can talk now. <laughs> it's notepad. Notepad. Okay. So in my head, you can see I've got my eyes shut because I'm doing a bit of imagination. Um, I'm imagining that door into the lounge being converted to a massive notepad, one of those reporter ones. So putting a lot of detail in there and imagining myself flipping it open. So I'm getting some movement in there as well as making it silly because it's a huge, big notepad. Okay. Now I'm not going to tell you my, what I do with all the others. But that's how you should do it. You should make it really silly, have movement in there, and something you're going to be really attached to the place. I'm thinking ahead. I'm seeing this notepad where that door would be. Right, so let's have the next one then, Rob. Pumpkin. Pumpkin. Okay. <laughs> that's a nice one. Pumpkin. Okay. Um, right, so if everybody's joining in, so now you want to put the pumpkin doing something silly in that second space. So I'm going to keep quiet while I do mine. Okay, I've got pumpkin. Next one, Rob. Is pen. Pen. Okay. Pen. Um, pen. Okay. Um. <laughs> now, see, I'm smiling because I'm doing something silly with the pen. <laughs> and that's always a good, if you can add a bit of humour in there. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Um, so I've got pen. I know what's coming up. All <laughs> <laughs> right, I'll know what I've got next. <laughs> All right. So, next one Combine Harvester. Combine Harvester. Okay. <laughs> Combine harvester. <laughs> well, you guys are good. I like these. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've got to stop laughing enough to do with the memory thing. Okay, um, right. What's the combine harvester going to do? So you try and think of something silly that the combine harvester is doing in that position, not any of the other positions, just that one position. So you can walk around and get them all in the same order. Okay, right. I've got combine harvester. Next one. Pepper grinder. Pepper grinder. Okay, pepper grinder. Okay, pepper grinder. Right. Um, what's that going to do? Oh, dear, that's making me sneeze, that one. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> right. Uh, next one, then, Rob. Umbrella. Umbrella. OK, umbrella. OK. Right. Um, what's the umbrella going to do? OK, umbrella, yep. Yeah. Mobile phone. Mobile phone. Okay. Now, if you've got something that can involve people, you can actually have somebody doing something on that phone so you can get somebody you really know and really like ringing you up on it if it's something like a mobile phone. So I'm going to do that. Okay. Okay, I've got that one. Now, this, this is the one that made me laugh because I don't even know what it is. A croissant jelly cat toy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know who put that in. I know that what that is. <laughs> no, you know what that is. Good. All right, well, I'll just have to take what I've got. Okay. Um... Croissant jelly cat toy. Brilliant. <laughs> you guys are evil. You ought to be up here with the orcs. Croissant jelly cat toy. Okay, goodness knows what that really is, but I've just made it sense of it as well as I can, okay? Chicken nuggets. Chicken nuggets, okay, chicken nuggets. Oh, they're making a mess on the desk, right, okay. Chicken nuggets, okay, right. So if they're making a mess on the desk, put them in the fruit bowl, which is the last one. Fruit, fruit bowl. bowl, fruit bowl, fruit bowl, okay. Okay, I think I've got it. And that's okay. Your pen. okay. <laughs> uh, right. I have no idea whether I've got those or not. I'm really scared about doing this. <laughs> this was not a good idea. <laughs> oh dear. Right. So we give it a few seconds between doing it and actually trying to remember it. So um, what I'm going to ask you to do is before I start doing it, those of you doing it along with us at home. See if you can write down as many of those 10 as you can remember. 
And then once you've had a little chance to do it yourself, then I'll do it. <clears throat> okay. Okay. So I'll give, give people a chance. Well, you still you can talk in this bit, Rob. It's okay. But people, if people want to write down what they think well, their I can ten talk are. Talk again now. No, you can talk. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you wait till I come on your show. Oh, <laughs> get me no. over. <laughs> oh, yeah. So. Uh, uh, yeah, so really interesting. Yeah. What, what we're really interested in is to see how many of you can actually do this. And if you've tried um, Margaret's technique, and we're very interested if it works for you, if you've not tried it before. Mm. Or if you haven't tried Margaret's technique, how did you get on just trying to remember them? I know my memory's not that good. That's what your computer's for, so you don't have to remember <laughs> stuff. <laughs> uh, mind you, I always forget where I've put it. So... Uh, Oh. Right. Okay, I'm going to give it a go. Are we ready? So, Rob, you got. There don't tell go. me we've got them right until we've done them. But uh, oh, the orcs are going to contact count it for me, are they? Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh dear, I'm really. I don't know whether this is going to go right or not. So, the first thing on the list was a notepad because my door was a big notepad, and then we had a pumpkin that was on the pictures that my dad drew. So I added it into one of the pictures my dad drew. And then we had a pen. So somebody was writing on the um, sideboard with a pen, which was what making me smile. Then we had a combine harvester. Oh, what did we have on the next cover? Pe a pepper grinder. Um, and then, oh, what's on the gym equipment? Oh, I've lost that one. Um, uh, oh, Jay's going to get it. She's putting her hand up. We'll get it off Jay in a minute. I've <laughs> lost that one. Um, <laughs> Then we've got the mobile phone. Then we've got the croissant jelly cat. <laughs> then the chicken nuggets. Then the bowl of fruit. Now I've missed, which one did I miss? I missed, let me see if I can see the gym equipment. What happened? To, oh, the umbrella, umbrella. I've got it now, umbrella. Yes. So, um, yeah. so um, how did I do there? Um, did I get you, them right? You got them all. You got them all right, yeah. You went back and got the umbrella. So that was it, all yeah. 10. Well done. So you can see, even in that very, very stressful environment, because it's terrifying being in front of loads of students doing this, I managed to get the 10 of them. So there should be a widget coming on screen for you to vote whether you got seven or more. And if you like that as a technique, tomorrow go back over your 10 items, 10, your, your 10 spaces in your room. Don't think about the list of 10 words. Just go back around your room and you can use that as many times as you like. Just make the first thing really, really different and really memorable. So I think what we'll do is we'll go to the next item. And then when the results come in from the um, uh, little widget, um, Rob will let us know because it'll take a few minutes for those results to come in. So <laughs> there we go. I'm very pleased I did. I just had that one thing. but you can, Because you can walk around the room and get back. So I could walk around back to that cabinet and think, oh, it was an umbrella stopping the rain, uh, rain getting onto the gym equipment. Who was that one? So, you know, it's, it's there in your head, whereas sometimes it's just not there. <laughs> so I, I liked your explanations. The, the fact that your dad drew a, a picture and you added a pumpkin in. So that was adding the depth for me, I think, there, seeing how you did it and how yeah. you brought it to life. Yeah. So what we'll do is while we're giving people the opportunity to vote on that, we'll just go back to our truth. So whose truth was it? Who had a dog who had a metal hip? So uh, let's see who you thought it was. And yeah, most of you thought it was Jay. Wow. Oh, actually, no. no. And wow. again, it's the, the person who's in fourth place. It's Rafa. So Rafa, <laughs> uh, his dog Cindy had a metal hip. And every time he tried to fly with his dog, he was getting into all sorts of trouble with security, <laughs> trying to prove that his dog wasn't smuggling anything dodgy. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> that was good. so uh, Heidi, have we got um, comments on how people have done with the memory test? Are we in a position for that yet? Yeah. Yeah, we have. So much better than me. Margaret, I am so impressed that you have just done that live, as you said, with everybody watching, like the pressure on you to get all of those right. So well done. And actually, I need to credit Hannah. Hannah was the um, our guest that came up with the brilliant uh, croissant jelly cat toy. So well done for that one, Hannah. I thought I want that a picture was of one. very unusual. I want to see what one is. I don't know what one is. <laughs> I, want, I want a picture. <laughs> I don't know. 
we need a picture. Yeah, we need we need a visual yeah. for for Rob so he can see what it is. But um, yeah, people in the chat are doing absolutely. They, they did so well with this. So Kerry got nine, missed umbrella as well, like you did, Margaret. Just at the end, you remembered that one. Um, Kirsty says, "Oh my word, remembered all ten with that technique. So shocked. Thanks for the tip." Rochelle says, "This is a brilliant technique of remembering things." Stuart says, "I got ten out of ten. I was taught this by my art teacher in school." And Catherine says, "Love the technique. I have a visual mind." Perfect. Samantha says, will this be repeated after all the gin is consumed? It'd be quite interesting to see whether people are quite as good as recalling these um, after they've had a couple of drinks, I think. Um, oh and, and Rachel says, these work well for me on my journey to work because the combine harvester was a field and the pepper grinder a pub. So that was nice and easy to remember. So I'm yeah, really impressed with how people have done. Really, really good. Yeah. I think we might revisit this at the end and see how many people get back at the end. So make sure we don't lose the list of items. We'll oh, keep no, that we've got to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> no, we will see. We will see. See, I've got a good chance of getting them all right because I've got it written down in front of me. <laughs> um, right. So our next um, truth that we're going to throw out. And um, so this truth, <clears throat> we'll reset the widget again. So this is uh, one of us when we were much younger and we had um, our first car and we were driving down the motorway. You can tell how uh, far back we're going because the motorway was quite quiet and uh, we, we broke down. The car just stopped. And this, I've got to say, um, <laughs> this might give you a hint that it's, it's possibly not Heidi because it was before the dates of days of mobile phones. No, we, we didn't have a phone and we were not able to call for help. So standing there, looking at the car, what's going on? Won't start. Um, all of a sudden, car pulls up, chap gets out. Are you OK? Yeah. Car won't start. Yeah. Has a look and uh, went to the front of the car and says, oh, your alternator hasn't been, uh, hasn't been connected. So... Somebody had been working on the car and forgot to connect the alternator, so the battery had run flat. And because of the sort of car it was, it happened to be a Mini, the battery was in the boot. So extra long jump leads were needed, and it just so happened that the guy who stopped was an auto mechanic who had an a set of extra strong jump leads, started the car, and off we went. But at the time, nobody else was passing. Just one person stopped and just happened to have exactly the equipment that was needed to get the car going again. So that's a true story for one of us. So have a vote and see who you think that story applies to out of the five of us. And um, we'll come back and have a look at that in a moment. So we, we, while you're thinking about that, we're going to move on to our caption competition now. So you were asked to send in some ideas um, and put some captions to some uh, uh, photographs of study buddies or something else. Just add a caption that you think is funny. And we want you guys to vote for the best one. Okay, so I, th I know that, uh, Heidi, you know who have sent all these in. We won't give the names yet, but um, would you like to talk us through the captions on the screen, Heidi? And then there is a link in the chat to something called Slido. Uh, are you okay to explain what people need to do with that, Heidi? Sure. And actually, yeah, I've uh, I've memorised all of these. I'm not using a list in front of me. I've used Margaret's technique. So all of this is off the top of my head. No, I'm joking. I'm not I'm not that good. Um, right. OK, let's go through our captions then. So image number one. Um, have we got that one available? Fantastic. Image number one. Here we go. So shall I say who these are from as well, Rob? You'd like me to to, to say who submitted these? Yes, let's say who they're from as well. Absolutely. OK, so here we've got image one um, and the caption is Thriller. And this is Emma C and her black dancing cat. So hopefully you can all see that one. OK. Excellent. OK, on to number two, <laughs> image number two. So this is Study Snack. This is Olivia and her black hungry pooch. What a super cute dog. 
Lovely. And caption three, we've got pumpkin. We've got Chloe O and Pedro the pumpkin in this image. And on to number four. Oh, look at that beautiful cat. I love those cats. They've got such amazing fur, haven't they? So four is figs. That's the that's the caption. And the information that I have is cat. I don't know if that means cat as in the cat or cat as in my colleague cat. I don't know if it's cat's cat or it's just a cat. But either way, it's absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> Right, and we're on to caption for, oh, look. Okay, the caption, uh, uh, we've got uh, image five, Millie, um, Rob. Not you, Rob, is it? Different Rob. Oh, yes, that's our Millie. Oh, this is your Millie, Rob. It oh, is. Lovely. Okay, on to um, caption six. So Pauline and her many cats. Um, and it says here, congratulations for being chosen faculty rep in the Faculty of Business and Law. Brilliant. Okay. And then on to number seven. Oh, look, <laughs> this is Mikey. And this is Rafa. So this is uh, this is Rafa's dog. Is that right, Rob? So Rafa is our yes. is our colleague. Oh, look, look at Mikey. I think there's a bit of photoshopping going on there, though. <laughs> He looks very comfy on the sofa. Right, we're on to eight. Uh, Bella and Peaches. Oh, my goodness me. Look at this. Look at this gorgeous dog. Mucky Peaches. Lovely. And then on to number nine, Procrastination Buddies. This is Rochelle mm -hmm. and her teddies. Lovely. And on to number ten. This is mm, nap time. And this is Emma N and her support cat, Twirl. Look at little Twirl. <laughs> um, on to 11. Thanks for your help. This is Chloe <laughs> N and Black Kitty. And then 12. Pauline, um, Pauline and her. Oh, this is this is Pauline again. So Pauline submit, submitted this one as well. This is Pauline and her many cats. And this is Pauline, who's the faculty rep in the Faculty of Business and Law. And then on to 13, we've got Laurie's Rainbow, Laurie and Rainbow Teddy. And then on to our 14th one, we've got um, Danielle and Brian. And this is Brian reporting for duty. Look at Brian. Oh, my gosh, a little Frenchie. Brian is divine. As you can tell, I am absolutely obsessed with dogs. I don't know if you can see on, I know we've got the caption on the screen at the moment, but I've got Martha behind me. So Martha was being very strange this week in one of our one of our shows this week. I don't know if you can see her behind me there, but she's all cuddled up. I took her out for a walk earlier in the pouring rain. So um, yeah, she's, uh, she's having a nice sleep behind me. So for our captions, we are going to ask you to vote for your favourite. And one of my colleagues is going to put the link to something called Slido in the chat. And there you can vote either 1 to 14 for your favourite caption. And then we're going to be revealing the winner. So um, let me just check. I think I think that should now be in the chat by now. Yeah, um, yeah Rafa's put that right, in the chat. So here's the link to three. vote. Is it three Three images yeah, when you go into Slider, it will ask you, yeah, it will ask you to put in your top three. That's right, when you go across. So you can go and submit which which three are your are your top favourite. Excellent. So we could, can we have a quick run through them again, just as a reminder of the 14? So if we just run from the top to bottom, that would be great. Sure can. So, yeah, number one. Thriller, MSC, we've got Study Snack here, Olivia and her Black Hungry Pooch. We've got Pumpkin, Chloe Owen, Pedro the Pumpkin. We've got Figs. Uh, next one, we've got Millie, which is uh, Rob's. We've got um, Pauline and her many lovely cats. We've got Rafa's Mikey as number seven. We've got Bella and Peaches, Mucky Peaches, number eight. Number nine, Procrastination Buddies, Rochelle and her teddies. Number 10, we've got Emma N and her support cat, Twirl. Number 11, we've got Chloe N and Black Kitty. Uh, number 12, we've got Pauline and her many cats. And number 13, we've got Laurie and Rainbow Teddy. And then 14, we've got Danielle and Brian. Brian reporting for duty. Excellent. So uh, we'll give you a couple of minutes to put your votes in. We'll give you just... Um, two minutes to do that then we'll have a look at 
who you've uh, chosen, who you've uh, picked as the winner. In, but before we do that, I just want to show you the Orcs didn't get theirs in time because we know what Orcs are like. They don't stick to a time scale, but they did send one in. And this is the Orcs version. This is their zombie hedgehog look, looking for beetly brains on the deck. So the zombie hedgehog. Uh, you can't vote for the zombie hedgehog, but uh, there we go. Crawling around in the dead of night looking for various things to nibble on. Okay. So while we're letting you um, vote on your favourite uh, caption, we'll just tell you whose truth it was. So if we can have the widget up for the latest truth. So which one of us <laughs> is the car driver that was miraculously saved? And uh, you all think it's me. Well, obviously, you, you knew me when I was younger, but it, that wasn't actually my story, though it could have been. Um, actually, it was Margaret. It was Margaret whose brother had tried to fix a car and forgot to collect, connect the alternator. <laughs> and miraculously, um, somebody came along that just happened to have exactly the right equipment on a quiet road in the middle of the night and got you going so uh, was, go on margaret it was even funnier than that because the van pulled up in front of me and on the side of the van it said vehicle electrical repairs and i was only <laughs> 22 and i very weakly said i think it's something electrical <laughs> and actually i cannot believe and there was no other cars it was a quiet dark wet night in november and it said vehicle electrical repairs and then drove off in the night <laughs> oh. Somebody was definitely looking after you that night, Margaret. Definitely. So fantastic. Um, so, Heidi, have we got votes in? Do we know who's won yet? Yes, we have. Right. We've had a few little technical issues going on in the background, so I can't see live who they are. But um, Angela, our wonderful producer, has just sent me through the winners. So, um, the we're going to go uh, three, two, one. So um, coming in third is image number two. So image number two was. <laughs> I'm going to quickly get my. Uh, <laughs> I haven't memorised it. Um, study snack Olivia and her black hungry pooch. Um, and then we have got in second place. Oh, apparently two and three are tied. Okay, so two and three are tied. So in joint second, we've got image one. Um, and image one was Thriller, and that's Emma C and her black dancing cat. And then in first place, drum roll, is mm -hmm. image number four. And that is Figs. Um, <laughs> the cat, the beautiful cat, there we are. So that was our that was everybody's favorite one. So Excellent. And we've got some Student Hub Live goodies on their way to the uh, to the three people who sent some uh, sent those three images in. So thank you, everyone that's took part in that. Uh, it's great. Uh, can't believe I didn't win. Uh, plenty of uh, plugging there, but we didn't win. But uh, that's OK. So before we move on to the next one, I'm going to give you my, our final story. So our final story, it's another dog story, because we do like dog stories. So one of our team was walking along Sandbanks Beach in Dorset, uh, actually just in front of Harry Redknapp's house. So if you've been watching any of the, um, uh, the TV programmes with Harry Redknapp and when he talks about his house at St Sandbanks, uh, this took place just in front of his house. And um, walking along the beach, giving the dog some exercise. It was a dog beach, so perfectly okay to be there. Um, and of course, they're allowed to run off and run free. Um, halfway down the beach, this person looked behind, thinking, where's the dog? And all they could see was the back legs and tail of the dog sticking out of somebody's bag. They were munching the way through somebody's barbecue uh, meat. So they'd gone into the call cool bag and basically buried the way to the call. Cool, and they were munching through raw sausage and burgers. Uh, apparently, the person was very uh, understanding. And um, as they walked away and looked back, 
he was quite busily putting the burgers and sausages onto the barbecue that was lit because the rest of his party were actually in the sea playing on some inflatables. So obviously the dog didn't impact too much on the barbecue. So that's a true story for one of us. So have a think about who that's going to be. Which of the five of us is it? And uh, we'll tell you the answer after the next um, activity. So the final activity we've got is slightly associated with, um, with study. And uh, this was me playing around with artificial intelligence. I've, uh, I gave it a bit of a try because we've been hearing a lot about um, chat GPT and generative artificial intelligence. And we've actually got a session coming up on this soon. Um, but I thought I'd, I'd see what can it do to help me. So I went to um, chat G GPT. I actually used it in Bing. And I asked it to describe the way that five different animals would study. And we're going to show you, though, and I want you to have a look at these. And then I want you to vote. And there should be a widget on this where you can vote and say which of these best describes you and then once you voted we want you to explain why this suits you best so if we can have the um the slide show up so we're going to work through which of these five animals best uh describes your study approach are you a bear strong independent you like to do things your own way um confident and determined solve problems but sometimes you can go off on your own and um, tend to be a bit stubborn and not take advice. So if that's you, vote for bear. Or the second one is, are you a sloth? Are you relaxed, easygoing? Do you avoid the stress? You calmly work through all the content, but there's a danger that you might procrastinate, that you might... Um, let things get in the way and go off and think about other things. Or maybe you don't get things done in time. But you're very good with change and adapting as things alter. Or, and the next one is, are you a bee? Are you the hardworking person? Are you uh, the type of student who likes to work with others in groups and really busy and you get things produced as quickly as possible? But sometimes you can be overwhelmed by the amount of work that you do. Uh, but the bee can be very good at organising and tends to do things by lists and to create um, proper plans for doing things. So if that's you, vote for the bee. Or are you, and I can't remember which one comes next, are you the owl? Are you the wise, curious, detailed person? You like to focus in. You like to know the nitty gritty. Do you like to generate your own solutions? Are you a perfectionist that can sometimes spend too much time on individual details? Or the last one, I think this is my favorite, are you the dolphin? Are you somebody that likes the fun? Are you creative? Do you like to come up with new ideas? So great to be creative and inventive, but sometimes shiny things can get in the way and can distract you and lead you off. So if you can have a, a think for a couple of seconds, which one of those best describes you, and then you can vote for it. And then in the chat, just tell us why you think that uh, that style suits you. Um, and there's a reason I brought this up. It's not a it's not scientific. There's no research be behind this. It's just me in an afternoon having fun with ChatGPT that also produced the images. So great fun. Uh, but it's really to bring out the, the point that we're all different in the way that we study. And as tutors, we like to work with all these different styles. We can work with people that are detail focused. We can work with people who... Um, like to sit back and go with the flow and just do things at their own pace. Um, we can work with people who are really independent and we need to be adaptive to your style. There's none of those styles that I would say is particularly good or particularly bad. They've all got the strengths and weaknesses, but it's quite useful to know 
what you're like as a student because then you know what you need to adapt to get you through and how to cope so i th i think the orcs have been asked this question as well so i asked the orcs who they were and as you can see uh, the the orcs didn't like my nights cutesy pictures they have got their pictures which are basically <laughs> orkified animals so uh, orc one was a, an orc bee so busy they're the ones that really like to capture the prisoners and take them off and you know work together and orc number two we've got the the orc dolphin creative and i dread to think what they've been creative in and uh, what they've used their creativity for uh, creative in, in drinks <laughs> and hobbitos so thank you orcs for taking part in that um Heidi, have we got some votes? Do, have we had some comments? Yes, we have. Well, it started off that we seem to have a lot of bears. Um, as you were reading mm -hmm. through those, we had lots and lots of bears in the audience, but it's now changed slightly. So um, we've got the most amount of owls. We've got 37% of our students are um, identifying with the owls characteristics. And we've had a few people comment. So um, Holly Ray says, I'm definitely both the owl and the dolphin. Um, Pauline says, I'm a mixture between bear and dolphin. Jamie Lee, I'm a mix between the bear, owl and the dolphin. So it's expanding. Oh, right. um, Kate then says, oh, wait, definitely dolphin. Um, Amelie says, I'm a mixture of bee and dolphin. And then Rochelle, Christine and Sophia says, I'm a bit of all of them. I think I personally identify with the bear, certainly with the stubbornness. That was the, that's the key word. I think if you ask my son, I think that would be the adjective he'd use to describe his mother. And certainly when it comes to my studies. Um, so, yes, I think I identify with the bear personally. So if we could just have a quick look at the votes. Uh on the screen that'd be great so this is how you've all voted um i think personally if i was going to vote i'd be there as the dolphin the creative person that um, gets distracted by shiny things that's definitely me i really have to focus and make sure that uh, if i'm trying to achieve something that i don't allow myself to go off at an angle and uh, Cat's sitting there laughing in the background because Cat tries to keep me under control when we do these sessions. And she knows how easily I go off chasing shiny things. Um, but it's always great fun because we always come up with things that, uh, <laughs> that, that, that make us laugh. So that, that's fantastic. Okay, so there was a bit of a, a sensible point to that. It's not, as I say, it's not the fact that we just wanted to um, have, a, have a pure laugh. It's to get you thinking as we move forwards. Because um, we want to know what you've, what your worries and your concerns are as you're coming at, towards the end of Freshers' Week and you're about to start your modules. Share with us the sorts of things that you've picked up this week so far. Um, is there anything that you're a little bit worried about? Have you got any concerns as we move forwards? Um, because what we're going to do in a moment, I'm just checking, and I can't believe it, I'm actually on time without having a clock in front of me. Um, once we've uh, finished this activity, we're going to give you the opportunity to ask us some questions or tell us what you're feeling or how you're approaching your studies coming up. Um, and uh, so... That's, uh, that, that's the final activity we're going to be going into. So have a think about any questions you might have. Um, Margaret, Heidi and myself will try and answer anything that we can. And if we can't get you an answer, we'll uh, make sure we get an answer to you outside of the session. So just going to finish with the last of the truths. So if we can get that last widget up. Whose dog ate the barbecue? And how have you voted? <laughs> uh, I can see uh, you're actually tied between me and Jay. And uh, yeah, I've got to say, it was my dog, Millie, that you saw in the earlier picture. She was there with her tail stuck out of somebody's call box, having eaten or chomped through most of the um, the barbecue food. And let's say the guy just waved us on and quite happily <laughs> put the meat straight onto the barbecue. 
uh, I'll say the rest of his guests on the beach didn't know about it. So what they didn't know can't hurt them. That's what I say. So thank you. So those are all the activities we got planned for this part of Freshers. Um, now we're going to come over to you and get your thoughts and comments. So Heidi, what are people saying in the chat? Have, have we got any thoughts on how they found Freshers so far? Have they enjoyed the, um, the sessions with Isabella? We, we've got people that are being really brave, actually, and sharing some of their main concerns. Um, so Jamie Lee says that failing terrifies me. So Rob, why don't we just have a bit of a chat about this and kind of unpack that term about yeah. failing and failure? Because this is something, it's a word I've used, uh, that I've heard a lot this week, that it's something that our students are scared of. But let's let's talk a little bit about that. That's a good idea. So failing. I've been a tutor with the OU for... Uh, goodness, 21 years now. The number of students that have actually failed is you can probably count them on the fingers, <laughs> the fingers of your hands. In 20 years, the number of students I've actually failed is very, very low. Um, and most students don't fail because they they fail at the assignments. Um, one of the things to be careful of is that you don't try and bite off too much. Be realistic. We do lots of things about time management and about how to structure your study time. And I think that's really important. So be realistic about what you're doing. Make sure you've got time to do it. One of the reasons I love working for the OU is they are so good at helping you to succeed. We are unique in universities because we don't demand entry level qualifications before you come in. We will allow you to demonstrate your ability based on the way you are now, not the way you were at 18. You can move forwards based on what your current level of ability and understanding is. Now, some people say, well, I was no good when I was 16. I didn't get any qualifications. Well, that doesn't matter. Some of my best students come to the OU at the age of 54, 55, having never uh, sat an exam since they were 15 when they failed miserably, and they are outstanding. They're brilliant. So the past history is not a measure of how you're going to perform moving forwards. We are also, and I'm, I'm quite proud of this, we're very good at helping people to ramp up. So you can go from a very low entry level straight up to really high quality university study within your first year. That's what we're good at, helping you to make that transition. So if you're coming into your first module in October and you're thinking, oh, I've not done something like this before. I've, I, I didn't do very well when I sat my exams back at school. But don't let that dictate where you're going to go because we allow for that. What we want you to do is put the effort in, follow the process, get involved, and you will have those skills and the abilities as we move you forward. And say, this isn't an idle boast. We've got million, literally millions of students who can testify that this is what we do. Um, so don't think about failing. I think the, the biggest challenge is not whether or not you're capable. It's about can you structure your time? Can you make sure you give yourself um, the opportunity to do the work that's, that's needed? And if you can, then you'll find that's a lot better. I don't know if I've answered that, um, Heidi. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that's brilliant. Yeah, brilliant response. Um, actually, Alan would like to know, before we move on to the next question, what modules do you and Margaret teach on, Rob? OK, um, so with uh, with me, I'm in the business school. So I teach on the introduction to business studies. I teach on um, innovation and entrepreneurship, which is fantastic. I love that one. Uh, marketing, uh, strategy and supply chain management. So I do a range of modules. Uh, Margaret, which are the um, the modules you teach on? Um, so currently S112, which is the um, combined science course. So we have geology, physics, chemistry, um, 
ecological ecolo, um, ec, <laughs> brain's gone. <laughs> <laughs> ecological sciences um and um and then um also um s206 which is the moving on from that in the ecological sciences and then previously i taught on u116 which is a combined science and social science course um so there's lots of essay writing in that one and then way back a long time ago um i used to teach on what was described as probably the hardest course in the university, which is SMT356 electromagnetism. So my students used to debate whether it was electromagnetism or quantum mechanics was the hardest of all the physics courses. But there was too much math in that and I kind of blew my brain as well. So I prefer teaching first and second level students. Um, so basically sciences. Um, my background is I'm a chemistry lecturer at other universities before, um, as well as working for the OU. So lots of different things. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, so Heidi, what what other questions have we got coming through? Yeah, ready for the next. So Kirsten says, I'm concerned about getting my student loan in time. Mm. Yeah, this can be an interesting one. Um, I, what I've got to, uh, as tutors, we don't get involved with this, um, but it is something that uh, the student support team can help and advise you on. Um, in terms of it coming through in time, there is a, a I believe, again, I, this is more anecdotal than I can, I can't actually say this is definitely the case, but from students that I've had, there is a period where they will accept students while the student loan is being um, arranged, but it's, it's not an exceptionally long time. It's about seven or eight weeks after the start of the module, I think. Um, so, I wouldn't like to be quoted on that figure, but I know that um, it is a bit of a crush at this time. So there is a certain allowance in time made, but the student loan does need to be arranged fairly quickly. If you have any trouble at all, and this goes for any issues that you have, our student support team is fantastic. When you go to your student homepage, there are there's a form there to allow you to contact the student support team. So if you have any concerns at all um, about your study outside of the module materials, I'll come back to that in a second, but any, any concerns about your study, contact the student support team. They will be able to advise you and um, help you in specific areas because there are lots of, um, uh, lots of questions that you'll have and they're all different, but the student support team is fantastic. If it comes to a question about your module and the actual study materials, that will be the tutor that you talk to. But for anything else, the student support team are absolutely fantastic. Um, so don't forget, go and get in touch with those if you have any questions. Okay. Ready for more, Rob? You're always ready for more. Excellent. Great. What's really nice is um, you were just talking there about getting in touch with um, student support. And Christine says, something I'm finding weirdly strange and difficult is the huge amounts of support. I've gone from 42 years of no support to an unmeasurable amount in just a few weeks. It's overwhelming, but in a really good way. So that's really nice to Ooh. hear that. Um, so... And another lovely comment that Tally made, it's taken years, but I'm now starting to fully understand that failure is actually just giving up. Not passing a module doesn't have to mean failure, just a hiccup, learn from it and go again. That's such a brilliant perspective, Tally. I absolutely love that. So um, moving on to another question then. Stuart said, is no, the I think only- Before we just move on from that, I'd just like to say the, the thing about the failure um, uh, and the giving up, your tutor is there to help. So whatever your issue, whatever your problem, talk to your tutor. I always say to my students, the only problem I can't help you with is the one you don't tell me about. There is lots of advice we can give. We can give you hints. We can give you tips. We can help you if you talk to us and if you talk to us early enough. Don't wait till it's hopeless <laughs> before you talk to your tutor. As soon as things you think things are going slightly off the rail, drop your tutor an email or ask, ask for a chat. And um, we're really good at helping um, identify the different options to help you through and the different solutions for different people. But all tutors will have seen almost everything that you can conceive of. We will have seen it before. And I have lots of sayings. One of my sayings is life happens. 
in the course of your degree, life is going to happen. And when it does, talk to us. There's lots of things that we can do. The only thing we can't help is the student that doesn't talk to us. Because if you don't talk to us, we can't. There's nothing we can do. So carry on with the next question, Heidi. Just want to get that one in. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so Stuart asks, is the only time we meet students and tutors at graduation or are there any opportunities offered to meet physically during the module learning? Um, yes, yeah, so since COVID, uh, our tutorials have mainly gone online now. Um, so there are a very few exceptions, um, but all of our tutorials happen online and that's where you will meet um, your tutors. So for example, in my module on B100 Introduction to Business Studies, we have tutorials where I bring my group together and we get to talk and uh, if they're happy to, they can put the video on. I always say that the more videos the students share, the smaller my face is on the screen. So that's the, um, <laughs> that's a bit of incentive to share their videos. But if we can get, if you get the opportunity to go to your tutor group tutorials online, that is where you'll get. Rob, I'm so sorry to talk over you, but we've lost your sound, Rob. You're muted, so we can't actually hear what you're saying at the moment. So while we try and get that back, I just want to respond to um, one of the um, questions that came through because it's something that I experienced myself. Um, so it's all around time management um, and we're all very much in the same boat with that. Um, so Melissa says that she's got some concerns about falling behind. Um, Gita says the amount of work, reading and assignments. Now, I know when you first start out, it really is very daunting. It's a very frightening time and you think, how on earth am I going to fit this in? As I mentioned, I myself um, was an OU student for six years. I did my degree in English literature and absolutely loved it. But my son was just a tiny baby when I started out and I did it because it was something to keep my mind alert and I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do in life um, so so um, you will definitely find that over time you will really hone those organizational skills and it's just about taking it one day at a time um, that's the real key it's very easy to get overwhelmed um, but there is so much support from the open university and I fell so in love with the place that I ended up coming here and working here so I've been here since 2012 um, so, so really lean into that support and use the support that's available. So hopefully we've got Rob back now and we can hear Rob. Can you hear me, Rob? Can we hear you? No. Okay. Well, this is fun. Rob, I can't hear you. <laughs> okay. So we're having some technical issues with Rob. Hopefully I'm not speaking over you, Rob. If I am, then somebody can mute me and they can shut me up. Um, okay, Margaret, why don't I pop a couple of questions to you while we okay, try and get yeah. Rob's sound back. Yeah. So Caitlin says that I'm mainly concerned about finding some friends um, while mm -hmm. studying. Can you talk us through a little bit about that process for students for perhaps connecting with others and finding friends? Um, it's not that easy with everything being online, I have to say, because we've got lots of rules about what we're allowed to share. Um, so it isn't easy. Um, the main thing is to take play, part in the forums that are available to you. So that's where you start to meet students. Um, also, um, in no and it's Student Hub Live, if you if two of you send your email addresses in saying you want to meet after you chatted in our chats, um, then we'll connect you up. Um, but um, it's really about um, the forums and also um, the tutorials. The tutor will often give you time in the tutorials to have a chat with each other. Um, so that's where you can get them to know each other. And a lot of students do join a lot of um, OU Facebook groups as well. So um, we can't <laughs> police those, but um, we do have a lot of our students joining the o um, Facebook groups as well, special ones for the OU. Fantastic. Thank you, Margaret. And I believe we've got Rob back. Hooray. Apparently we've got you got me back with some <laughs> echo now. <laughs> so I might we have can to, hear you. 
I'll have to shout to the orcs and ask them to turn the TV down on the other side of the cave. <laughs> right. So thank you for that, Margaret. I, I think what I actually did was I, I think I trod on the uh, microphone cable and pulled it out. <laughs> but there you go. This is the, the joys of student from live. Um, which means I, I missed the last question. Hopefully it was all answered <laughs> fully. Um, yes, yes, Margaret answered that one um, for us. Yeah, about making friends. Um, one of our oh. guests was a little bit apprehensive about making friends um, and, and how to meet people and connect with people. So um, we just, would, just... Did you talk on. about the um, the forums at all? So we, we had um, a session this afternoon for our carers. So we had a special, uh, for, uh, a special event for our student carers. And one of the suggestions there is if you go to Open Learn, there is an open learn module specifically on making best use of forums. And that's where you should be looking to build up those relationships with uh, other students in your group. So it's a great way to get to know people. Uh, as tutors, we're always amazed that some, some groups absolutely fly. You, you get groups that just chat about absolutely anything and they have a great time. And we get other groups that are quiet as mice and they don't talk to each other. So if you want to, get stuck in and use your forums effectively. When I was a student with the OU, um, we used to run self-help groups uh, long before the internet. Um, we used to meet up in people's houses and hotel bars and things and have, uh, have our meetings there. So that was great. Uh, am I right in thinking, Heidi? We've got a picture of some cocktails that have come through. I th have we got some pictures of cocktails I that have come through? I'm not sure, yes. Rob. Have we? Yes, we have. <laughs> have we got them up on the screen? Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah, we're getting some. We're going to have the picture up on the screen here. Wonderful. So this is Chloe's mocktail. Well done, Chloe. And I like the glass as well. Excellent. So thank you for that. Um, oh. So people in the chat are saying they want to swap details. We don't do that here, but I, apparently if you go to the Open University Student Association and ask to contact somebody, as long as you both go and ask to be contactable, uh, they will put you in, um, in touch with each other. What we don't do is we don't share anybody's personal information. So if you go to the um, USA, O-U-S-A, um, Open University Students Association, they will be able to set you up and, and make that, those contacts. I'm not sure exactly how that works, but if you go to the Students Association page, you'll be able to find that out. Um, Rob, can I ask you another question? Alan said, was it can't... Millie that pulled your microphone out? Have you got Millie under your feet? Was it? Can you blame oh, no. Millie or was it actually just you? <laughs> no, un unfortunately, we lost Millie last year. So, oh, I didn't realise, Rob. Oh. Yes, no, no, no. But she's she was well known for eating microphones and earphones and things. But, oh. but yes. But How no, old she was she, Rob? Sorry? How old was she? She was 11. Oh, 11. Oh, good age. Bless oh, her. Oh, good age. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Good Looking age. after us. Bless her. So, so, yeah, we've got lots of other questions um, in yep. the chat, Rob, if that's OK. So, um, Lauren, so this is a great one. So I'm concerned about doing two TMAs at the same time as I'm doing two modules. So I actually did this as well. So when I was doing my literature degree, so I've got BA honours in literature and the OU then changed it to English literature. So I did a lot of I loved it. I did a lot of text that was translated. Mm -hmm. But um, in order to get the qualification of literature, I needed to finish within a specific set of time. So I compressed my last two modules and I did creative writing and then I did Shakespeare because I, I absolutely adore Shakespeare. And I thought I can't possibly graduate with a literature degree without having immersed myself fully in Shakespeare, which I absolutely adored. But that was a, a busy time. It was a busy time, but it was definitely doable. So have we got any advice or guidance for Lauren, Rob, on um, working on two TMAs at the same time when she's doing two modules at once? And I think this comes back to the discussion we had earlier about being realistic in what you can do. 
So we give students advice and say that if you're studying um, a 60 credit uh, module over nine months or a 30 credit module over six months, you're looking at somewhere between 12 and 16 hours study uh, to do that module. Um, that's not a bad estimate. And that 12, to, because everybody's slightly different, this is why we can't say it will take you exactly this length of time, but 12 to 16 hours is a reasonable estimate for you to do everything that is in the module, um, carry out all of the discussions and write all of the assignments. If you're doing two, you've obviously got to double that to between 24 and 32 hours a week. If you can't commit to that amount of time and you want to do two modules, something is going to compromise. You're going to either end up um, skimping on the reading or not taking part in all of the activities. So uh, unless you're doing the, mod the degree as a full-time degree, um, then it's perfectly doable. But if you're working full-time, you have to ask yourself the question, have I got the amount of time to commit to this and um i've had students that have done it and they've done it successfully but and i'm going to bring margaret back in in a minute so margaret get ready um but what i've found is that students who are trying to do a full-time job and two modules at the same time can be successful but they're always running from one point to another and it's always about trying to juggle the things rather than enjoying it your degree is supposed to be fun it's supposed to be enjoyable and it's supposed to help you grow rather than be something you've just got to get through margaret do you have a similar experience yeah quite a lot of students when i'm doing the first year course also do the other one that goes with it to do the whole of the first year in one year um I think the main advice is to um, always read the TMA as soon as you've just finished the last one. So when you're studying, you've got the TMA in your head. So it makes it much easier to do the TMA rather than all the reading, then read your TMA and do it. So think of it as a continuous process as you read the TMA before you start to do the work. And the other thing is keep in touch with the tutor. We do have a lot of flexibility. If you end up going wrong and dropping one of your balls in your juggling, um, just talk to them and tell them what's happened. The worst thing you can do is bury your head in the sand and not talk to your tutor about it. Um, if we know what's going on, we can see that you're doing the other module. If you're saying, look, I need an extra two days because this one's come in on Tuesday, that one's due in on Thursday. I've just got to get to work as well. I've got two kids, etc. We, we're people. We, we've done the same ourselves. And sometimes I've even had to ask for extensions myself as a student, you know, so we've been there. Um, and, um, uh, but as Rob's saying, if you're realising being realistic is really important as well, if you're realising it's not working, talk to student services again and um, try and work a plan with them. And, and sometimes it may be accepting the fact that, yes, you can pass both courses, but you're not going to be able to get a fantastic grade on both courses. Yeah. And I think you've got to manage your expectations as well. If, if you're scraping through doing six or seven hours study a week instead of the 12 to 16, I, can you really expect to get the best grade you possibly can? But again, if you're if you're not working or you're working part time, then it's perfectly doable. So when it comes to the two assignments at the same time, that's about planning. Read ahead. Don't don't let an assignment be a surprise. You get your plan at the start of the year. You know when things are coming up. You can see what the pinch points are going to be. Work around them. Um, I had a student ask me for an extension once because they were unexpectedly getting married, which made me smile. You don't unexpectedly get married. You plan it for months. Um, and, you know, so if you've got big things coming up during the year, work around them. I've had plans with students where they've, they've got things in early or we've delayed them and they put them in late. But we've talked about them well in advance because they've known things have been coming up like... Um, operations or uh, a, a baby's due or a wedding you know but we talk about it well in advance these things don't suddenly crop up i mean you will have things that you don't expect but planning is the key and margaret's advice about reading your tma early is really important students who do all of the study 
So most most assignments come at the end of a section. So you'll have a period of study with an assignment that uh, asks you to talk about what you've been studying. If you wait till the end of that period of study to read your assignment, you then have to go back again to figure out what we were talking about. So as a tutor, I would say to my students, read the TMA before you start the section because then you can start to pick out and highlight the key things that you're going to want to include in your assignment at the end. And that will apply whether you're doing one or two assignments at the same time. Um, when you've got two assignments due at exactly the same time, it's a, it's a really difficult one. I always avoided doing it as a student because it was just, um, just too much of my brain to handle, to be honest. Um, but make sure that you keep them separate in your own mind and this might sound daft but when you send them in send the right one in the number of times we have students who send in um, an assignment for the wrong module and they end up with zero it, it's not funny and there's not a great deal we can do about it um, and the way you do this is make sure you keep your thinking separate but also think about how you label your files. If you call your assignment TMA1 and you call the, the assignment for both courses TMA1, how do you know you've sent the right one in? So think about how you're naming it and put your course code in and also use the word final. So TMA B100 TMA1 final. That way you know when you send it in you've sent in the final version of the TMA1 for B100. And that's not just if you're doing two modules, because I've had students who sent me in TMA1 from a module they'd done three years before, because it's still sat there in their computer, and they've just clicked send in TMA1. So naming convention is quite important, and think about how you're going to make sure you send the right thing in. So I've got a tip there, it, actually. Can I just get, hop get, in there, Rob? Yeah, yeah so I've got a tip. So with the TMA, so that was something that was always a big concern of mine about accidentally submitting the wrong one. And it's exactly as you said, it's that version control. And when you've got so much going on and you've got so much going on at work. And when I submitted my dissertation, I had an 8,000-word dissertation for my postgrad. Um, and I submitted that in um, September, it was September of last year. My goodness me, I can't believe it. It was this time last year. And the fear when you have spent it, I, I think I worked on that for a year and a half. And that yeah. concern about please, please, please let it be the right one. So what I used to do was I would save it on my desktop, but then I had a specific USB stick just for the very final TMAs. So I could oh. just go through that mental process of making sure anything that ever needs to get submitted is only on the USB stick. Don't add anything from the, from the <laughs> desktop. And that way that really helped me with version, version control. So hopefully that might be a useful tip for others as well. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, I think we're coming towards the end of the show now. We've had some fantastic questions and we've really enjoyed um, hearing from you all. We hope you've enjoyed it. And um, you're just about to start on a really exciting adventure. Your HE study is going to really change your life as you move forward. We want you to enjoy it and we want it to make a real difference as you go forward. So um, keep in touch and uh, make sure that if you've got any questions, you talk to your tutor or to somebody in student support. Once we finish this session, we're going to ask you to fill out a feedback form. Feedback forms are great. So somebody asked me a question earlier, how often do these uh, socials happen? Well, they happen um, three times a year at the moment, uh, the two freshest weeks and at Christmas. And we might do one at the end of the year next year. But we put on our events uh, in response to the things that you ask us for. And that's what the feedback form is there for. So tell us, if you've enjoyed the social and you want more of them, tell us. Um, if you never want to see me on screen again, tell us. That's fine. We're, we're happy with any feedback. Um, 
but the feedback form is your way to tell us what you wanted to do. So when you get the chance to fill it in, it'll only take you two or three minutes, but it makes a massive difference to what we do moving forwards. Uh, I'd like to just a quick shout out to some of the events we've got coming up. So we've got events um, regularly throughout the year. So next week, we've got at, on the 26th, we've got a session on making the most of your tutor and tutorials. That's 11 o'clock in the morning on the 26th. Uh, 27th, we've got how to improve your academic writing. And on the 28th, we've got exploring generative AI and how it can impact on your study. Uh, and then in October, we've got the OU Essentials quiz. So Heidi and I will be back for that one. And then we start looking at essay planning and a range of other uh, activities coming up. So if you want to see the full list, go to Student Hub Live uh, webpage and they'll all be there. And remember to subscribe if you want to know what's coming up. Uh, the subscription lets you know about them, uh, all of the events and lets you book. Um, so I'm just having a quick check if there's anything else from the team to say. No, so all I'd like to say at this point is thank you to everybody who's joined us. Thank you to Rafa and Kat, who've been manning the chat magnificently. Uh, orcs, well done. I think I've got to go and uh, find some dead animal to feed you in a minute and uh, get my cave back to normal. Uh, Margaret, thank you. And Heidi, a pleasure as always. It's been great. And a big shout out, because we don't do it often enough, to Andrew and Angela, who are keeping us under control um, in, the, in the studio. So thanks, guys. And it's been great. We look forward to seeing you at the sessions in the future. And uh, yeah, make those mocktails and send us some pictures. Thanks, everyone. And see you soon. Bye-bye.